for the, uh, the nice introduction of, of Jomi. Continuity, uniform continuity, absolute continuity. This is a basic level introduced students in Palapuram syllabus in direct title Subtil, I will like adding a little discuss it. Um, clear up concepts clear up on the law. Okay, so let me start with uh, the Cauchy Weistra's definition of continuity, uh, which is uh, familiar to me. If Let A subset of R, more, uh, I talk uh, more on real valued functions uh, defined on subsets of R. Uh, basically, uh, you can, with sufficient adaptation, you can uh, generalize it for met uh, metric spaces. Suppose A is a subset of R. A subset of R and F max A to R that is actually a real valued function. Then we say that F is continuous. at C element of A if for every epsilon greater than zero there is a corresponding corresponding delta greater than zero such that Modulus of f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon whenever x belongs to c. X uh, sorry, c belongs x belongs to a, and modulus of x minus c is less than delta. That is, if for all x element of A with the mod x minus C less than delta, if we get the modulus of f of x minus f of C less than epsilon, then we say that f is continuous at C. If the function f is continuous at every point of the set A, then we say that f is continuous on A. If you are dealing with arbitrary met metric spaces, x dx uh, with the metric dx and y with the metric dy, and f is a function from x to y, you can modify this definition accordingly. Okay, basically, uh, what is the idea of continuity? It is about nearness. That is. If you if x is near c, if x is near c, then the definition tells uh, you that f of x is near f of c. That is uh, a continuous function takes nearby points to nearby points. That is it's, it preserves nearness. Okay. 
Now, let us uh, consider uniform continuity. I will come back to continuity later. If we consider the sales set, uh, setup, if f is a function from a to r, then we say that f is uniformly continuous. Uniformly continuous. on a you should underline this f is uniformly continuous on a if for every epsilon greater than zero there is a corresponding delta greater than zero such that For x comma y elements of A with mode x minus y less than delta, we get modulus of f of x minus f of y less than epsilon. Um, if you compare this definition uh, with the earlier one, that of continuity, then you can uh, observe, make some observations. Uh, first of all, when we define uniform continuity, in the last case, in, uh, when we defined continuity, uh, we defined continu continuous function, function which, which is continuous at a point. Here there is no such thing. Uh, we define uniformly continuous function on a set. Okay, so uniform continuity is a property associated with a set. Okay, we never say that F is uniformly continuous at the C element of A. Okay. Uh, secondly, see whenever two arbitrary points X and Y in A are close that is mode x minus y less than delta we get the modulus of f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon okay here we we should observe one thing that is if f is continuous at c say at c then corresponding to every epsilon greater than zero, we get a delta. In the definition of continuity, we get a delta which depends on not only which depends not only on epsilon but also on the particular C element of A. Okay, C element of A. That is the delta in the definition of continuity is actually a function of epsilon and c okay the, the delta the number delta greater than zero which we mentioned in the definition of continuity is a function of epsilon and c as c varies for a particular c1 you get a delta one for another C2, you get a delta 2, like that, for the same epsilon. Okay. Now, in the uniform continuity, for all, for every pair x comma y, you should get, uh, for all x comma y, we should uh, be able to manage with a single delta. So, the, con the con uh, 
continuity can be extended to uniform continuity if you have this uh, a number like a delta star which is equal to infimum of delta epsilon c for c element of a that is corresponding to a c1 corresponding to a c1 you get a delta epsilon c1 corresponding to if there is continuity corresponding to another c2 you get a delta epsilon c2 okay like that Corresponding to another point C3, uh, we get a delta epsilon C3. So if uh, we get an infimum of all such numbers for every C element of A, then if that infimum exists, then we can do for all points in that set with that delta star. Then uh, we get we have uniform continuity. So In the case of uniform continuity, for every epsilon gate runs zero, for all pair of points x comma y in A, we can do with a single delta. Whenever mod x minus y is less than delta, we get a mod f of x minus f of, f of y less than epsilon. Okay, that delta depends only on the point, only on epsilon, but not on the particular point. Okay. This is, uh, I can, uh, from a layman's point of view, I can compare this with uh, uh, the mouse and a cursor on the monitor. If we move, move the mouse a little bit, uh, and if the cursor moves, cursor on the screen of the computer uh, moves uh, a little uh, proportionately, then uh, there is uh, continuity as well as uniform continuity. That motion is uniform. That is, uh, uh, if uh, for a small dis uh, change in x, th there there is only a proportionate change in f of x. Okay. But if we move the mouse a little bit and there is a and the cursor on the screen of the computer moves uh, makes an uncontrollable movement, then the that that is that situation is uh, doesn't suit for uniform continuity. Okay. Firstly, uh, let me give an example for a function which is continuous but not uniformly continuous. An example, an example for a function which is continuous. but not uniformly continuous. The function f from open interval 0, 1 to r defined by f of x equal to 1 by x. Obviously, the function is defined everywhere in the uh, semi closed interval 0, 1. And you can easily show that the function is continuous. Function is continuous. If you want, we can prove it 
um, very quickly. Um, let epsilon get run zero be given. If if epsilon get run zero is given, if x belongs to closed interval zero, semi closed interval zero one, semi closed interval zero one. We, we need to show that there exists a delta greater than zero. Delta, there exists a delta greater than zero such that modulus, uh, modulus of f of x minus f of c equal to modulus of 1 by x minus 1 by c. This c, c belongs to semi closed interval 0, 1. He is less than epsilon whenever x belongs to semi closed interval 0, 1 and mod x minus c is less than delta. This is what we need to prove that f is continuous at c. So, our x is in semi-closed interval 0, 1. So, mod x minus c less than delta means that x belongs to c minus delta c plus delta x belongs to c minus delta c plus delta so this interval we expect c minus delta c plus delta to be contained in semi closed interval 0 1 That is, C minus delta, uh, delta must be greater than 0. Or, C is, C must be greater than delta. Now, choose delta less than or equal to C by 2. Delta less than or equal to C by 2. So that minus delta is greater than or equal to minus c by 2. Therefore, c minus delta, c minus delta is greater than or equal to c minus c by 2, which is equal to c by 2. Now, mod x minus c less than delta implies that x greater than c minus delta, which is equal to c by 2. c minus delta, which is equal to c by 2. That is, x is greater than c by 2. Therefore, 1 by x, 1 by x is less than 2 by c. 1 by x is less than 2 by c. So, modulus of f of x minus f of c equal to 1 by x minus 1 by c equal to modulus of c minus x, the whole divided by cx. Remember, both C and X are non greater than so. Uh, this is equal to, okay, sorry, it is less than, it is less than, we have mod X minus C less, less than delta. 
if mod x minus c less than delta, the numerator is less than delta, and x is greater than 1 by x is less than 2 by c. See, 1 by x is less, uh, less than 2 by c. Mod c minus x is less than delta. So, mod c minus x by c x is less than delta we require mode c minus x uh, to be less than delta so we need to find delta such that when mode x minus c is less than delta modulus of f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon So here x is greater than uh, c by 2. So c minus x is okay. 1 by x is less than uh, 2 by c. There is one more c in the denominator. So it is less than this is less than 2 by c squared into mod c minus x. 2 by c squared into mod c minus x. Now we have to show that if mod c, x minus c is less than delta, then mod f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon. So it is enough to choose delta equal to c squared by 2 into epsilon, right? Delta equal to c squared by 2 into epsilon. Then if mod c minus x or mod x minus c is less than delta, then c square by 2, 2 by c square and c square by 2 uh, get cancelled and we we are left with epsilon here. So if with the, with the choice of delta equal to c square by 2 epsilon, mod f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon whenever mod x minus c is less than delta. So we prove that f is continuous at an arbitrary point c in semi closed interval so on so f is uh, continuous everywhere on semi closed interval so on now we proceed to prove that f is not uniformly continuous not uniformly continuous on the knee close interval so wrong how to prove this what was our definition of uniform continuity we say that f is uniformly continuous on a e for Every epsilon greater than zero, the, the, there exists a corresponding delta greater than zero, such that whenever x and y are elements of A with the mod x minus y less than delta, we get a mod f of x minus f of y less than epsilon. Okay. So we, now we are trying to prove that f is not uniformly continuous on zero one. So we have to negate. Okay. So here we are trying to prove that for some epsilon greater than zero, there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that some epsilon greater than zero and some x comma y in semi close interval zero one.
for every delta greater than zero. For every delta greater than zero, we get we get modulus of f of x minus f of y greater than or equal to epsilon when mod x minus y is less than delta. And here the definition is negative in the region of the region. That is uniformly continuous. That is there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that for every delta greater than zero and for some x comma y in for some x comma y not for all some x comma y in, uh, in this set we get f of x minus f of y greater than equal to zero when when mod x minus y is less than delta otherwise for every epsilon greater than uh, sorry for some there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that for every delta greater than zero and for some points x comma y there exist points x comma y in semi close interval zero one such that the modulus of f of x minus f of y is greater than or equal to epsilon then mod x minus y is less than delta okay Remember, we seek delta greater than zero. Now, it is possible to choose, it is possible to choose x element of semi close interval 0 1 with x less than delta because delta is uh, required to be positive and x belongs to semi close interval 0 1 so delta is we uh, fix some delta uh, arbitrary don't fix uh, let the delta be an arbitrary positive uh, quantity. Anyway, we can uh, choose an x greater than zero such that x is less than delta. Okay. For every delta greater than zero, it is possible to choose uh, a smaller point, smaller point x, which is greater than zero. Now take y equal to x by 2, y equal to x by 2, then since x, x is greater than 0, y equal to x by 2 is also greater than 0, uh, so y is also in semi close interval 0. Okay. Now, modulus of x minus y equal to remember our y is x by 2 so x minus x by 2 x minus x by 2 which is equal to x by 2 as x is positive now our x is less than delta so x by 2 is less than delta by 2 which is less than delta as we said, mod x minus y is less than delta. Now let us see what is mod f of x minus f of y. Modulus of f of x minus f of y equal to modulus of 1 by x minus 1 by y equal to 
modulus so 1 by x now 1 by y y is x by 2 so 1 by y is u by x which is equal to 1 by x now where is x x belongs to semi closed interval 0 1 okay that means x is less than or equal to 1 right x is less than or positive but less than or equal to 1 so this is greater than or equal to 1 so if we had chosen epsilon earlier our epsilon were half then definitely this says that mod f of x minus f of y is greater than or equal to 1 which is greater than epsilon similarly you can choose epsilon equal to 3 by 4 or epsilon equal to 1 itself you get a mod f of x minus f of y greater than or equal to epsilon greater than or equal to epsilon even when mod x minus y is less than delta remember uh, the condition uh, that f is not uniformly continuous if there exists some epsilon gate transfer so this need not be satisfied for every satisfied for every epsilon gate transfer for some epsilon gate transfer and for every delta gate transfer here we have to fix the delta gate transfer only thing is that uh, only restriction on delta we impose is that the delta is positive once delta is positive it is it is all, always possible to have this restriction delta greater than zero it is possible to choose a uh, find the x, x element of semi closed interval zero one such that x is less than delta okay then if you choose y equal to x by 2 then mod x minus y is less than delta but the mod f of x minus f of y is greater than or equal to epsilon so if you fix epsilon equal to 1 then it's, it works it shows that the function is not uniformly continuous for some epsilon gate transfer for every delta gate transfer there are points x comma y in semi closed interval zero one with mod x minus y less than delta but mod f of x minus f of y greater than or equal to x so there is no uniform continuity actually what was happening here see this is the graph of the function f of x equal to 1 by x you know for x greater than uh, 0 so you see that as x gets closer and closer to zero the function f of x grows rapidly this rapid growth in fact this it is this rapid growth amounts to non-uniform continuity okay this uh, doesn't if the growth is uh, proportionate to the change in the argument x then this does not happen for example y equal to f of x equal to x f of x equal to x here the growth of the function is uniform see and the change is uniform you you see that mod f of x minus f of y equal to mod x minus y so with the delta equal to epsilon we get a uniform continuity so the function f of x equal to x is in fact uniformly continuous in the entire real line because uh, it doesn't grow very rapidly for small or 
uh, very rapidly compared to smaller uh, as x increases. Okay, it does not grow rapidly as x increases. This is it is because this steep increase, a, a steep increase in the value of one by x. The function is not uniform, uniformly continuous. In fact, we have a theorem that uh, I hope I don't try to don't don't try to prove the theorem because it will take too much of time. So just uh, I state the theorem. If f if a function f is continuous on a compact set, continuous on a compact set. If f from a to r is a real valued function and a is compact, then there is very little to distinguish between continuity and uniform continuity. Uh, in fact, on a compact set, every continuous function is uniformly continuous. So, See, this set is not compact. So if you choose half one or a one for that matter, for any a greater than zero, for any a greater than zero, if you define the same function, same function f of x equal to one by x in the closed interval a1 it will become continuous no, sorry uniformly continuous because on this interval the function is we have already shown that it is continuous so being a compact interval this function must be uniformly continuous for the same reason you can say that the function, the same function is uniformly continuous in the semi closed interval A1 also for any A greater than 0 because uh, you can find A, since A is greater than 0, this interval is contained in A by 2, 1. And this is compact. And then, so this function is uniformly continuous in this interval. So it must be uniformly continuous in the semi-closed interval A1 also. To demonstrate the difference between continuity and or again the function is the function f of x equal to 1 by x uh, for x element of semi closed interval 0 1 is this function continuous x element of uh, say a infinity we define uh, here we consider f of x equal to 1 by x where x belongs to semi closed interval semi closed interval a infinity where where a is greater than zero is this function uh, uniformly continuous on this interval. Uh, this is not a compact interval. It is not bounded. So it is not a com uh, compact interval. However, you can show that uh, the function is uniformly continuous in this interval. This is because
remember the graph of f of x equal to 1 by x. See what happens as x uh, tends to infinity. As x tends to infinity, f of x tends to uh, tends to plus infinity, f of x tends to zero. So the fluctuation in the value f of x minus f of y or as x uh, and y are for large x and y for large x and y is very very small uh, this type of a growth doesn't happen here so the function even though the interval is not compact the function one f of x equal to one by x will be uniformly continuous because the un uh, uncontrolled growth uncontrolled growth uh, is the sole reason for the lack of uniform continuity that doesn't happen uh, as x increases x becomes very large uh, in the case of the function f of x equal to 1 by x so, so, for, so for, for that reason uh, the function f of x equal to 1 by x is uniformly continuous sorry i should write it like this uniformly continuous it is uh, not close that infinity uniformly continuous in a infinity even though the interval is not compact another example is the simple polynomial function f of x equal to x squared you know that being a polynomial is continuous in the entire real life uh, we don't have to prove it in fact but the same function f of x equal to x squared f of x equal to x squared for x element of r or x belongs to zero infinity we may take it domain as zero infinity then we know that f of x is equal to x squared is continuous But it is not uniformly continuous. As before, we have to show that there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that for every delta greater than zero, there are points x comma y in this set, semi close uh, close in in the in this interval with uh, mod f of x minus f of y greater than or equal to epsilon even when mod x minus y is less than delta okay now first of all we observe that in this case f of x minus f of y equal to modulus of x squared minus c squared or x squared minus y squared equal to mod x minus y into x mod x plus y let delta equal to that epsilon equal to 1 we fix epsilon equal to 1 we, we are to find delta greater than 0 satisfying the condition mod f of x minus f of y greater than 0 uh, uh, even when mod x minus y is less than delta so our delta is greater than 
delta must be greater than zero. Okay. So delta be any quantity greater than zero. Let y equal to two by delta. Y equal to two by delta. Since delta is greater than zero. 2 by delta is y equal 2 by delta belongs to our set. Okay. Let x equal to y plus delta by 2. y plus delta by 2. y plus delta by 2. Then what is x modulus of x minus y? Modulus of x minus y is x is y plus x is y plus delta by two. Therefore, modulus of x minus y is delta by two, which is less than delta. So that condition is satisfied. Mod x minus y is less than delta. Now, one implies that modulus of f of x minus f of y, modulus of f of x minus f of y equal to, modulus of f of x minus f of y equal to mod x minus y into mod x plus y model c. It is our mod x minus y is less than delta. Mod x minus y is equal to delta. Mod x minus y is equal to delta by two. Mod x minus y is equal to delta by two. Uh, y is two by delta. y is 2 by delta, x is y is 2 by delta, x is y plus delta by 2, y plus delta by 2, okay, x is y plus y plus delta by 2, that is 2 by delta plus mod x minus y is less than delta by 2, y is 2 by delta and uh, x is 2 by delta plus delta by 2, I think, 2 by delta plus delta by 2, okay. So, this is Delta by 2 into 2 by delta it is 1 plus in fact 4 by delta is 4 by delta uh, into delta by 2 it is so it is 2 delta by 2 into 4, 4 plus 4 by delta it is 2 plus uh, this is delta squared by 4. Okay. So, mod f of x minus f of y is, our epsilon is, see, our epsilon is 1. So, mod f of x minus f of y is actually greater than epsilon. Even when mod x minus y is less than delta. So, we have shown that it is not uniformly continuous. It is not uniformly continuous. The function f of x equal to x squared is not uniformly continuous. In the interval, 
roles in uh, in the in the role as a role in thing okay this is because unlike the linear function y f of x equal to x which we saw earlier this has a very steady growth it this is this doesn't grow very rapidly but uh, the function f of x equal to x square it 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 grows rapidly as for law of x it is because of that condition uh, the function is not uniformly continuous in this semi close interval the same function f of x equal to x squared by our earlier discussion if you restrict it to be uh, to the interval 0 1 or 0 100 or 0 1000 for that matter it is uniformly continuous because uh, the function is already continuous and the, these intervals are formed back so f of x equal to x square is uniformly continuous on uh, any closed interval closed bounded interval but it is not uniformly continuous due to its uncontrolled growth for large x it is not uniformly continuous in the interval uh, So, uh, so row infinity or R. Another example which uh, I can give in this context is the function. f of x equal to square root of x for x belongs to see um, if you compare x square and x x square grows rapidly if you compare x and root x then the growth is uh, lesser in the case of square root function let us see what happens modulus of f of x minus f of y equal to modulus of square root of x minus square root of y less than or equal to modulus of square root of x plus square root of y as we are dealing with the non negative quantities now since mod square root of x minus square root of y is less than or equal to modulus of square root of x plus square root of y square of this quantity is less than or equal to modulus of square root of x minus square root of y see modulus of square root of x minus square root of y is less than or equal to square root of x plus square root of y if you multiply again by modulus of square root of x minus y you get square on the left hand side and on the right hand side it is uh, this one which is equal to modulus of x minus y this is the, the thing which we wants to prove the uniform between okay now taking the square root on both sides we get modulus of square root of x minus square root of y is less than or equal to modulus of uh, square root of modulus of x minus y 
So on the left hand side, you have f of x modulus of f of x minus f of y. Okay. So modulus of f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to square root of mod x minus y. So for what delta? We get it. mod f of x minus f of y less than epsilon when n over mod x minus y is less than delta. We should get this thing less than epsilon, right? So if you choose, it is ideal to choose delta equal to epsilon squared, right? Delta equal to epsilon squared. Then if the expression under the radical sign is less than delta, that is mod x minus y is less than delta, equal to epsilon squared, you get it. Mod f of x minus f of y is less than square root of epsilon squared, which is, that it is equal to epsilon. Okay? So, the condition for uniform continuity is satisfied. So, as I told you earlier, the function grows it, its growth is uh, smaller compared to the linear function f of x equal to x. f of x equal to x is uh, uniformly continuous in R here the function. Uh, but where we, we saw that f of x equal to x squared is not uniformly continuous in semi closed interval, uh, in the interval zero infinity. This function is uniformly continuous in the same interval function f of x equal to x is uniformly continuous in R itself. Okay. We can make some observations. As I told you, on every compact interval, f of x equal to x squared is uniformly continuous. Now, let us proceed to absolutely continuous function. Um, I have to finish, finish this topic uh, by 8.15, according to Dr. Shangla. So, I move on to the section absolutely continuous. A function f from close interval a b to r. A function f from close interval a b to r is said to be absolutely continuous. Continuous on AB. Absolutely continuous on AB. If corresponding to an arbitrarily corresponding to an arbitrary game. 
ആർബിറ്ററിൽ ചോസൻ പോസിറ്റീവ് നമ്പർ എപ്സലോൺ അനദർ പോസിറ്റീവ് നമ്പർ ഡെൽറ്റ ക്യാൻ ബി ഡിറ്റർമിൻഡ് അനദർ പോസിറ്റീവ് നമ്പർ ഡെൽറ്റ ക്യാൻ ബി ഡിറ്റർമിൻഡ് such that for a sequence of non overlapping intervals for a sequence of for a sequence of non overlapping intervals there is a, a for a sequence of non overlapping intervals hr k of r equal to 1 2 3 etc for a sequence of non overlapping intervals HR, KR, R equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. Defined on AB. Close interval AB. Sequence of non-overlapping intervals HR, KR defined on close interval AB. Sigma modulus of f of hr minus f of kr is less than epsilon provided provided modulus of sigma modulus of hr kr minus hr is less than delta. I shall repeat, a function f from close interval a, b to r is said to be uniformly continuous on the interval a, b. So, it is like a uniform continuity. We are defining absolute continuity also on the, on a closed interval, on a set. Okay. if corresponding to an arbitrarily chosen positive quantity epsilon there exists a delta greater than zero such that for a for any non overlapping sequence of intervals for any non overlapping for any sequence of non overlapping intervals for any sequence of non overlapping intervals so the this this intervals are non overlapping intervals hr kr are equal to 1 2 3 etc defined on close interval ab this sum sigma f of hr minus f of kr is less than epsilon whenever sigma kr minus hr is less than delta so how to translate this into something which is easy, which can be easily understood now what are, just see what are the what are these things these are the flux modulus of f of hr minus f of kr is the fluctuation of the function f for the interval hr kr right absolute value of the fluctuation okay it is you can call it the fluctuation so the total fluctuation the net fluctuation corresponding to the sequence of non overlapping intervals the net 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 or total fluctuation corresponding to the sequence of non overlapping intervals is smaller than epsilon if the what is mode kr minus hr it is the length of the interval open interval hr kr this is the length of the open interval hr kr okay so this sum less than delta means 
the total length of the intervals total length of the intervals in the sequence or collection is less than delta so if the total length of the intervals in the countable collection is less than delta then the total fluctuation the total fluctuation is less than epsilon this is the idea of absolute continuity you can make the total fluctuation for the sequence of non overlapping intervals less than epsilon for every epsilon get transfer there is a delta get transfer such that such that for every sequence of non overlapping intervals hrka defined in a closed interval ab the total fluctuation corresponding to the collection of non overlapping intervals can be made smaller than epsilon if the total length of the intervals is smaller than delta that is the idea of absolute continuity an easy observation every absolutely continuous function is uniformly continuous how can you be prove this നമ്മൾ യൂണിഫോം കണ്ടിന്യൂറ്റി പ്രൂവ് ചെയ്യണമെങ്കിൽ ഫോർ എവ്രി എപ്സിലോൺ കേട്ട് ട്രാൻസ്ഫോറോ റിമെമ്പർ ഫോർ എവ്രി എപ്സിലോൺ കേട്ട് ട്രാൻസ്ഫോറോ വി മസ്റ്റ് ബി ഏബിൾ ടു ഫൈൻഡ് എ ഡെൽറ്റ ഗ്രേറ്റ് ട്രാൻസ്ഫോറോ സച്ച് ദാറ്റ് വെൻ അവർ എക്സ് ആൻഡ് വൈ ആർ എലമെന്റ്സ് ഓഫ് ദി സെറ്റ് സെറ്റ് വിത്ത് മോഡ് എക്സ് മൈനസ് വൈ ലെസ് ദാൻ ഡെൽറ്റ വി ഗെറ്റ് എ മോഡ് ദസ് ഓഫ് എഫ് ഓഫ് എക്സ് മൈനസ് എഫ് ഓഫ് വൈ ലെസ് ദാൻ എഫ് ഓക്കെ സോ വാട്ട് ഷുഡ് ബി ഡു in the definition of absolute continuity to get the uniform continuity in the countable collection just take one into then the sum of the fluctuations total fluctuation it becomes modulus of f of x minus f of y right okay f of x minus f of y what is the total length of the interval it is mod x minus y so if f is absolutely continuous then by taking a single interval x y we get mod f of in the, uh, in the definition of uh, in the definition of absolute continuity by taking just one interval like this where we agree that y is greater than x modulus of f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon when our mod x minus y is less than delta so every absolutely continuous function is uniformly continuous okay but the converse is not true converse is not true i shall give an example for a absolute uh, function which is uniformly continuous but not absolutely continuous consider the function f of x equal to x sin 1 by x for x not equal to 0 and 0 at x equal to 0 you can easily verify that the function is uh, yeah continuous at x just uh, all you need is to check the continuity at x equal to 0 everywhere else sin 1 by x is continuous x is also continuous so the product is continuous all you need is to check the continuity at x equal to 0 but uh, it can be easily checked and verified that uh, a function is continuous at x equal to 0 as well 
So um, if you choose uh, f of x equal to sine 1 by x for x element of semi closed interval 0, 1, and 0 at x equal to 0, then the function is obviously uniformly continuous on closed interval 0. Since it is continuous on closed interval 0, 1, it is uniformly continuous on closed interval 0. Okay. Now consider an arbitrary collection of sorry, a collection of not countable collection of non-overlapping intervals 1 by r plus 1 pi comma 1 by r pi r equal to 1 to etc. It is a countable collection of non-overlapping intervals in both interval 0 1. See 1 by r plus 1 pi is less than 1 by r plus half pi, which is less than 1 by r pi, correct? For any r, any integ positive integral values of r, okay. That is, uh, that is 1 by r plus 1 pi is less than 2 by 2 r plus 1, 2 by 2 r plus 1 pi, which is less than 1 by r pi. Okay. Now, in this uh, interval between 1 pi r plus 1 pi and 1 by r pi, x sin 1 by x, x is maximum value. We can show that uh, at the, the point. This point. So, what is x sine 1 by x at x equal to 2 by 2r plus 1 pi? It is 2 by 2r plus 1 pi into sine sine x sin 1 by x, okay, 2r plus 1 pi by 2, okay, sin 2r plus 1 pi by 2 is 1, so this is equal to 2 by 2r plus 1 pi, so x sin 1 by x takes the value 2 by 2r plus 1 pi at 2 by 2r plus 1 pi. Okay. Again, x sin 1 by x at x equal to 1 by r plus 1 pi, 1 by r plus 1 pi, it is equal to One by R plus one pi into sine R plus one pi, which is equal to zero. So, so this 
So, see, this is 1 by r plus 1 pi. This is 1 by r pi. So, in between, this is 2 by 2r plus 1 pi. So, it is something like this. At this point, you get to this much fluctuation. And at the point r plus 1 pi, it is 0. So, what is the total fluctuation? of the function in for the interval 1 by r plus 1 pi. Remember, at uh, one, 2 by 2 r plus 1 pi it is 2 by 2 r plus 1 pi and at the right extreme 1 by r at the left extreme 1 by r plus 1 pi it is 0. So, the difference is 2 by 2r plus 1. Pi. 2 by 2r plus 1 pi. So for the for the, the fluctuation, the fluctuation, fluctuation for the interval 1 by r plus 1 pi. Comma 1 by r pi is equal to 2 by 2r plus 1 pi, which is obviously greater than 1 by r pi. Remember our choice of the points 1 by r plus 1 pi less than 2 by 2r plus 1 pi less than 1 by r pi. So, 2 by 2 r plus 1 pi is greater than 1 by r pi. This is the only interval in the total fluctuation. So, the only interval in the fluctuation it is greater than 1 by r pi. So, what would be the uh, total fluctuation in the case r varies from 1 to n. Suppose there are n non-overlapping intervals, finite, n non-overlapping intervals in that collection, then the total fluctuation modulus of 1 by 1 by uh, r pi, r plus 1 pi minus f of 1 by r pi. It will be greater than summation r varies from 1 to n 1 by r pi which is equal to 1 by pi into sigma r varies from 1 to n 1 by r. This is the partial sum. You know this is the partial sum of the divergent series sigma 1 by r. Sigma r varies from 1 to infinity 1 by r. So, as the number of intervals, non-overlapping intervals, becomes larger and larger, this becomes unduly large. So, the total fluctuation is not bounded above for a countable sequence of non-overlapping intervals. Whereas, the total length which we uh, total length of the intervals. What is the total length of the interval? Our typical interval was 1 by r plus 1 pi and 1 by r pi. So, the length of that interval is 1 by r pi minus modulus of 1 by r pi minus 1 by r plus 1 pi. Uh, since 1 by r plus 1 pi is smaller than 1 by r pi, we don't require modulus, I think. 1 by pi into 
R plus one minus R one by R into R plus one. Okay, that is the length of this particular interval, which is smaller than one by pi into one by R square because one by R plus one is smaller than one by R. So it is less than or equal to one by pi into one by R square. So the length of this uh, typical interval is less than or equal to one by pi into one by R square. So just like this, if we consider a n non-overlapping subintervals, then we get the summation r varies from 1 to n. 1 modulus of 1 by r pi minus 1 by r plus 1 pi is less than or equal to 1 by pi into summation r varies from 1 to n 1 by r squared see the difference here this is uh, a partial sum of the divergence is whereas this one this one is the partial sum of a convergence is sigma 1 by r squared so as uh, even uh, for a large number a countable countably you can choose countably into uh, non-overlapping uh, non intervals in closed interval 0 1 just like 1 by r plus 1 pi 1 by r pi r equal to 1 2 3 etc this will this uh, total fluctuation it becomes infinite it is not bounded whereas this becomes uh, the total length of the interval it, it can be uh, it is finite and can be made smaller than uh, some uh, delta but for, for any delta whatever be delta if you choose a large a countable sequence of non-overlapping intervals this this quantity is finite always so whereas this one is as n tends to infinity, this become uh, this uh, the sum diverges, sequence a series diverges to infinity. So you cannot control the fluctuation. You cannot control the uh, total fluctuation. It is grows without any bound, so even when the total length of the interval is finite. So. You are not getting absolute continuity here. Okay. The function is uniformly continuous, but it is not absolutely continuous. I I think I should stop here. I hope uh, the students could have got some information from this class i i was i wasn't all that comfortable with this online mode of uh, teaching or webinar or whatever whatever it is called till i uh, i made an attempt i don't know whether i have uh, i could do justice uh, with uh, what i was uh, uh, requested to be. Anyway, I conclude. Uh, once again, I thank uh, my friends in the Department of Mathematics, uh, Uni uh, University College, Tiruvannam. Thank you, sir. Was it uh, clear? Oh, yes, it, it was clear. Uh,